Anya from Cooking with Plants and today I'm making garlic Hasselback potatoes with no oil. So this is great for your heart and great for the hips. Let's get started. This is not a recipe as such, it's more of a guide for you. So you can use as many potatoes as you like but today I'm using 10 small organic potatoes and because they are organic I'm leaving on the skins. So first of all, make sure that all of the potatoes are sitting nice and flat. If you need to, just cut off a little piece off the bottom of each one. If you have large potatoes, you can also cut them in half and then sit the flat side down on your lined baking tray. When preparing your potatoes, cut three quarters of the way through. Be careful not to cut all the way down because you do still want the whole potato together, but wedges cut into each one. Slice some garlic into thin slices. I find that I use about half a clove to one clove of garlic per potato. So it really depends how much you like your potato and if you're using garlic in each of these potatoes as well. So some of them I have left without um, garlic in them because I do have some people that are going to be eating these that aren't fans of garlic. Because we're not using oil, the substitute for that is going to be a thickened vegetable stock. So what you will need is a pot and without turning on the heat, add one tablespoon of cornstarch and also one cup of vegetable stock. Turn on the heat to a high heat and stir in constantly, bring it to a boil. As soon as it comes to the boil, you'll see that it's changing in texture and that it starts to thicken and take it off the heat immediately so it's ready to use. Now that your potatoes are all prepared and ready to go, preheat your oven to 200 degrees Celsius or roughly 400 degrees Fahrenheit. And what you'll need is a basting brush. And we're just going to put this mixture onto each one of these potatoes. Be quite generous with it and let it run in between and just coat all the edges as well. And we will be doing this stage several times through cooking, so make sure you don't use all of it in one go. So once these are all basted, just sprinkle on some coarse Celtic sea salt or some Himalayan pink salt would be nice on here too. And place these in the oven for 30 minutes. Our 30 minutes is up and these are ready to baste again ready for our second baking so give it a nice thick coating now that you've basted all your potatoes again pop them in the oven for another 15 minutes these are ready for a final baste just a light basting and then you can put them back in the oven for another 10 to 20 minutes till they're browned and crispy to your liking if you find that some of the cuts in your potatoes have stuck together because of the mixture that you've basted them with, just get a knife and run it through gently and just open them up a little bit for the final baking. Any leftover basting mixture can be put into a screw top jar and put into the fridge for use later on. So these have finished baking. They've been in the oven for a total of about one hour and I'm just going to sprinkle them with some dried herbs. I'm just using dried basil, you can use your favourite herbs that you like and they're ready to serve and eat. They smell so delicious. That nice garlic smell, it's beautiful. Really looking forward to eating these but they are really, really super hot at the moment. I'll try one of these crispy bits off the end here. Oh, so hot, 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 hot. Mmm. Yum. These with a side of veggies, some mushrooms and a nice gravy. Yum. Beautiful dinner. Mm -mm. So give these a try. Let me know what you think. Remember you can print the recipe for this off my website at cookingwithplants.com. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do because I do put out new videos every single week and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.